Salt and sea. I was absolutely amazed. It was as bad a desert as anything I've seen in the United Arab Emirates or Africa. And the more I saw, the more I went, hold on, this doesn't need to be a desert. We've done this. I know how to get the ecosystem functioning again uh, through a process that I developed a long time ago in Africa that I called biological carpeting. Biological carpet is quite simply a conglomeration of dung and urine from livestock in a thick enough mat that it holds the soil, protects the soil microorganisms from ultraviolet light and holds moisture in the soil for seeds to germinate. In a nutshell, what I figured out was that the enemy was ultraviolet light. So we know UV light sterilizes and kills all the bacteria in our water. What do you think it's doing to our soil? The top millimeter of microbes is the most important millimeter. If it dies, then the second millimeter can't establish. So if we can't protect that top millimeter, nothing else can happen below. I really pushed the envelope of the knowledge. I did 13 years of experiments. Then I went to Colorado and I tried it and I got the same result. Then I went to Canada and I got the same result. Then I went to Australia and I got the same result. So then I was like, okay, I've got it. I figured it out. Well, what Roger was saying just all seemed ridiculous. <laughs> In the amount of grass you're going to grow and all this sort of stuff. And we just sort of said, well, you know, what if even just a fraction of what he's saying is true? But last year, we uh, we had the cattle on this area here for about a day, a day and a half. And uh, what's grown back is is just incredible. Like underneath the trees here, we've got green panics. We've got some natives starting to come back with just one, one pass. It went from two species to 17 species. The amount of ground cover that we've grown is just incredible. I think I'm the first person to connect the chemistry to the biology, to the fungi, to the seeds. Yeah, I'm the first guy who pulled all these multiple parts from numerous different fields of study into one picture. The biological carpet has been through the intestine of a grazing animal, so it's full of fungi spores. Now, the fungi spores are the most important thing once we've protected it from ultraviolet light. Anyone, if you ask them, you know, uh, what conditions mushrooms need to grow, everyone will tell you warm, wet and dark. Well, in the desert sand of the Sultan Sea Imperial Valley area, where are you going to find warm, wet and dark? Under the biological carpet. As soon as I see the biological carpet is the right texture, thickness, consistency from you know, my experience of what I like it to look like, then we just move the animals. And then as soon as the new park carpet is perfect, we move the animals. So it's like a caterpillar crawling across the desert. So the biological carpet is just to jumpstart the life cycle. Once the life cycle is able to get started, get out its way. I, I came up with a saying, and life begets life. More life begets more life. And now you've got the cycle beginning. So you've jump-started the life cycle. I've done more research. These seeds stay in the soil and they wait for the right conditions to germinate. And now we're finding trees that are 2,600 years old that are germinating. We just germinated a 30,000 year old plant. Scientists are now figuring out we can germinate old seeds. But I was the first guy on a ranch. I was the first guy to do that. I didn't do it in a lab, I did it with nature. Mother Nature knows what she's doing. I don't know what'll happen. All I know is that wherever we've done this, it's worked. Now, obviously you start with one acre, but I want to get to 150,000 acres as quickly as I can to make a difference in the world. Everyone looks to California. So I'm hoping that you know, the, the world can assist me to do 6,000 acres to get started. This is what's so frustrating. It, it would be so easy to just repurpose what we've got and to turn the desert back into grasslands. But everyone has 100% fear of the unknown. No one is willing to risk it. No one's willing to put their neck out. No one's willing to try something different. I mean, we've been doing the same old, same old, and our climate is not looking healthy. So I think at some point we've got to pluck up the courage to say, okay, let's do it. A lot of the world's clever people said that we've got 60 seasons left before we've destroyed the world's croplands. So that's three generations. In the big scheme of things, that's tomorrow. So there is a limited time opportunity to get the natural grasslands and ecosystem functioning again before the irrigated land dies.